Let's look at a couple more viewport navigation and display options in 3ds Max. You'll probably want to maximize one of the viewports so it'll take up the entire 3ds Max screen. So to do that, you can go to the very extreme far right hand corner of the interface and you'll see something that says maximize viewport toggle. You click that button and your current viewport zooms to fill the screen. Again, as with almost all the viewport navigation controls, you're better off using the shortcut, which in this case is Alt W to minimize or maximize viewports. So if I want to make my top view fill the screen, I can click in it to activate it and press Alt W. Alt W again to go back to the four viewport layout. By default, the perspective view will show shading and the orthographic views, front, top, and in this case left, they all show wireframe views. You can choose the shading mode of each viewport. One way to do that is by right-clicking on the viewport label, and you'll see a bunch of shading options here, such as smooth and highlights. Right-click, and I can switch back to wireframe. This is yet again a case where the shortcut keys are much faster and easier and you're just going to want to memorize them. F3 toggles between a wireframe and shaded view. So I can highlight my perspective view and press F3 to switch to wireframe. Even better, when you're modeling, you might want to have shaded mode on but also be able to see wireframes. You can additionally press the F4 key, which will show you edged faces. I can right click here and you'll see edged faces as an option. The shortcut is F4. A couple other miscellaneous things. The G key will turn the grid on and off for each viewport. Also, if you don't want to lose your selection, for example, let's say I have my cone selected and I want to switch to a different view, but I don't want to lose that selection, instead of left clicking in the view, I can right click in the view and my selection will be preserved. Let's also look at viewport configuration. If you right click on any viewport label, at the very bottom of the pop-up menu you will see configure. And in fact we've already been here before when we were turning off our steering wheels. And in here there are lots of options, too many for us to cover right now, but one that's immediately relevant is layout. If I go to that tab and click it, now you see I've got a bunch of different options for viewport layouts. So for example, I can get a side-by-side -side layout. And here I can choose what I want to see in that viewport. So I could choose perspective on the right and top on the left, for example. Click OK. And now I've got a new layout. I can also just right-click on the viewport label and choose a different camera. So I could look from the front switch it back to perspective. And in fact, that's a good thing to know in case you get lost in 3D, especially if you're not using the view cube. Sometimes it's easy for you to kind of get lost and not really be able to figure out where you're at. There's a couple ways to get back to sort of home base. One is to right click, choose views front, and then right click again and choose views and switch it back to a perspective view and then you're basically back home. There are lots of keyboard shortcuts. And when you get good with 3ds Max, you're going to rely on those a lot. Just a couple that you'll want to know. T is for the top view. F is for front view. L is for that left view. And P converts the current view to a perspective view. Let's take a look at object properties in 3ds Max so we can get object colors and names and display options sorted out. If you select any object, you will see its name and color displayed in the command panel. In the create panel, it's at the bottom. In all the other panels, it's actually at the top. So I could, for example, select this object and rename it dodecahedron. And I could change its color by clicking on the color swatch. 3ds Max has its own palette, but I actually prefer to use the AutoCAD palette because it gives me more options here. 
The thing to know about this is that this is not the actual material of your object, it's the so-called wireframe color or object color. You'll see there's a switch down here that says assign random colors. That means when you make an object, 3ds Max will automatically assign a random color. You can override that if you wish. So now, for example, if I create more objects, they'll all be in this yellow saffron color. If you select an object, you can look at its object properties dialog. One way to get there is simply to right click on the object and you'll get a pop-up menu. This is called the quad menu in 3ds Max and it's context sensitive. When you click the right mouse on a selected object, you can look at its object properties dialog. And there are lots of things in here once again. Too much for us to go over at the moment. But one of the things that's fun to do is turn on see-through mode. And then we've got, without even having a material on the object, we've got the ability to see through it. So that's a little bit about navigating the 3DS Max interface, getting familiar with the shortcut keys, and working most efficiently.